All right. All right, everybody. Welcome Arcade to is lunchtime. It's lunchtime. Oh, is yeah. it really? Yep. It's time is it for lunchtime where you box. Get... <laughs> it's bedtime. Actually, time. actually, it's it's exactly eleven eleven a.m. right now. Which is wow, you know, numerology. It's nine ten actually, Tyson. So your 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 clock's wrong. I don't mm -hmm. even know how much eleven eleven is actually about numerology as opposed to just making a wish. I don't know where that comes from, but you just so remind me. Do you of... make a wish at eleven eleven? I don't know. That's an Amerimut thing. I don't know if they do that in other countries, but that's that's a thing. Right, I mean, I'll I don't do shot. it. <laughs> All right, don't tell me what it is or it won't come true. But you reminded me when you said it's lunchtime. Do you guys have Lunchables where you are? Pizza Lunchables? Oh, like there's like little snack kind of things that you like pull the yeah. plastic no, off like the I foil. Think in in yeah. New Zealand, we have this thing called like a Lee snack where it's a cracker and you dip it in cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had that here. We had that here. <laughs> and you dip it in cheese? Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's like, yeah. it's like liquid it's like... cheese or something. <laughs> Liquid che cheese whiz is disgusting. So and so is liquid cheese. Cheese isn't meant to be like that. Cheese has a little more dignity than that. So I, I won't uh, I won't respect that. But you guys are indeed listening to the Pink Boys podcast. And as I understand it, we have Adam here today and Tyson. Last episode was a heavy hitting, hyper intellectual episode. I'm looking to dumb it down because Adam's here. I and, think I can know, do that myself. I, I think I, I can bring the dummy down action. Don't worry about that. Yes. So yeah. we, Feeling my drop already. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And I think that's what people, they need a breather after the, the truth social bombs that Tyson and I dropped on them <laughs> last week. Yeah, it, it's, so, it's, it's like sometimes you just want to eat McDonald's instead of a 200 pound steak. You know what I mean? You're like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We had our healthy dinner last week and now we're just, I'm hungover. I need McDonald's. So that's, that's why you're here. And I, you know, yeah, this episode Tyson... is just all waffle, no content. <laughs> oh, now you make me want IHOP. Oh my goodness. Yeah, dude, I'm IHOP so excited so fucking to fucking good. eat like all the fucking American fast food joints when I'm over there. Just disgusting just... American food. IHOP is a national treasure. Just it like is a some national pure treasure. grace, you know? Just you know what's like, like the uh... idealized like American fucking lunch? I want to go to like one of those classic diners and have like a, like this large black woman just like pour coffee for me. She's now, like, what can I get you, honey? Now, huh? And what like, can I get you, honey? And I'm like, I want that Grand Slam. And, oh, God, it's like some greasy well, you, shit. You're, plate. you're mixing up diners and IHOPs. But, yeah, they all, they're all kind of congeal into the same thing. I saw something on Twitter that was that was around along the lines of the uh, USA starter pack. And it was just a bunch of neighborhoods, <laughs> a Walmart, and, you know, a McDonald's. And, and everyone was commenting, this is accurate. This isn't even funny. <laughs> and I thought to myself, this is accurate, and I love it. So that's what America is, and I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Oh, so. say can you see? Amen. Diners are Kino, Amen. though. Diners are Kino. Absolutely. I was having, they're, they're closing down a very prominent diner in my area. My friend's trying to find a new one. So there's a lot of talk. about like, them. Are they dying or are they still pretty going strong? No, diners <clears> are pretty <throat> much going strong. This was just a specifically shitty diner. So, oh, but okay. I, I'll go up to the diner. I'll go up to the bar at the diner and get some Dude, bacon, this is like bacon a, and eggs. It's yeah. like a weird bacon, egg and cheese on an like, Aki roll. But it seems uh, like it would be fucking sick to be a, a police officer and then just hit up a diner. No, it'd be awful like to your, be a police officer. I hate home, them. I feel like. Yeah, maybe at 3 a.m. when you're done your shift and you're done pulling over <laughs> yeah. teenagers for going 10 miles <laughs> and over the speed limit. And There's only, basic... only, only one group that's worse than police officers. Yeah, well, I'm not the sure what FBI. that is. Yeah, the teenagers. FBI, obviously. Uh, all right. All right. We'll, uh, we'll shelve that because I will be certainly ready to talk about that event and a few other ones in a bit. But first, I'll just ask... Tyson, you were on vacation and you were kind of bettering yourself. You were doing some Tai Chi, Taekwondo, whatever stupid MMA shit. Are, are you carrying that with you back home now that you're home now? Are you eating healthy? Are you still working out or is that done now? No, I'm, I'm still carrying it. So I have eaten nothing but fucking chicken breast, broccoli, and, and brown rice for the majority of Yeah, you've of my been meals. posting all your cooking. I've been seeing that. It's, yeah, I've actually it's been looking pretty comfy. I'm not going to I'm actually lie. doing this experiment where I cook chicken breast like seven different ways and i'm trying to see which is like the juiciest method and dude, fucking <laughs> fucking oven baking is so keno dude it's so that easy chicosi, it takes too long to preheat 
I'm not gonna do the oven thing. It takes too preheat. long to preheat. Just like, it takes like two minutes. Yeah, just like turn it on to 180 and then just go like wank or something and then it's dumb. <laughs> yeah, like, so you know, I'd rather seconds. I'd rather pan sear. I'd rather pan sear. Ch chicken is disgusting unless it's fried. It's very boring, pale, pasty no, white person no, no. food. You're not, you're not doing the same method or the right, uh, but right on the method. barbecue. Barbecue is so chicken. fucking juicy. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'll just put hot sauce on it. That's the only thing that would make chicken interesting to me, but I barely eat chicken anymore. Actually, I'll probably have wings tonight. So, yeah. also, I'm so, that from the I'm so fucking sick of people that like are scared of of like undercooked chicken. Like I'll I'll cook a chicken <laughs> perfectly. Salmonella. <laughs> no, 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 like not like actually undercooked chicken, but I'll cook it like perfectly where like it's juicy and shit. And then people walk past it and like, oh, that's so fucking undercooked, dude. Let, let me like <laughs> we hate this you. <laughs> Who are these chicken policemen <laughs> that, are, that are monitoring your chicken intake? They're our, they're our listeners, guys. God, come on, let's. Uh, yeah, that's true. I don't want to eat undercooked chicken, but I feel the same way about meat. I went to an Ethiopian place the other night, and one of their, uh, it's called Kitfo, and it's basically just steak tartare. And when you get it, it's it's just. It looks like an uncooked hamburger mushed up Based. on top of injera, which is their version of naan or bread. And I am I think to myself, this is disgusting, but I can't wait to eat it. And it's amazing. <laughs> so I, I can just eat straight up. And you know what? When I'm making ground beef or beef cubes or anything else, I'll tear off a little piece and eat it raw. Why not? Based? What's the worst Kill thing? That, yeah. That's a base alert. So uh, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Got, all right. You're going to hit the base button on that one. I'm not going to lie. Absolutely. So, all right. I'm glad you're carrying that with you a little bit, Tyson. And, you know, Adam, you weren't here last week. So how are you doing? Yeah, I was good. I mean, you guys decided that you just didn't want to record with me because I was off doing things. And that's okay. What was I even <laughs> doing? I'm trying to... I'm trying to <sighs> we didn't care whether on. it was okay or not, but keep going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's been good, you know, just fucking, I've been working a lot, you know, just, I've been waging, it's, 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 it's getting to me. Hey, it's an honest life. living, right? It's an honest yeah. living, I want to so. be dishonest and, like, you know, live in a penthouse <laughs> yeah. and freak it, you know what I'm saying? Like That's true, we should start making dishonest livings for ourselves and not become pimps because Tyson can't do oh, that. Oh, yeah. But... Tyson's fucking... <laughs> like, when Tyson didn't understand that, like, the concept of territory, and it was like... <laughs> There's no fucking <laughs> brothel gangs in fucking New Zealand, you dumbass. You you don't know that. You don't see them in action. You don't see them. You're not in, you're not in New like, Zealand. What circle. the fuck do you think this is? Like fucking Albania or some shit? Dude, probably. There, there's, there's probably prostitution in every town in America, and there's probably turf there. Uh, I'd like to find out where they are, but it is what it is. There's not much you can do about that. <clears throat> so, all right, we're all done with the pleasantries. And before I move forward, I just wanted to say. Just like the episode if you're listening to it. Just like it on YouTube, right? Yeah, is that, like the well, previous is that episode what we're talking well. about? We fucked up with the upload for that one, but just do it. In um, time. You know what? I'm, I'm fine with that episode not having a lot of views because that last episode is res reserved for high-level thinkers. Well, well, isn't it know? like mm -hmm. the, the Petrarchan choice of the, whatever the fuck the word is? What the is that? Word? Robos Basilisk? What did you say? No, the Petra, the Petrosh, like the Patrician. Oh, you know Patrician. <laughs> yeah. Are you trying to say Patrician? <laughs> Dash and the Giant. Okay. Well, yes. That last episode is the Patrician's Choice, the aspiring Josh intellectual. <laughs> Josh and Drake. No, I I was spitballing. I, Dosh and the Giant is a name of an unreleased uh, Japanese GameCube game that popped into my head. So there's the, oh. the reference for you. So not many people will catch that one. So, yeah, it, it, that that was last episode. That was then. This is now. But, you know, you, you go back and listen to that episode. You didn't do much with it. But I'm, I'm glad it doesn't have tons of views because... That's that's for thinking men, and I only want mm -hmm. thinking men listening to that episode. But now <laughs> it's clear there aren't too many thinking men around. <laughs> yeah, not a lot. Not a lot of our viewers are thinking men, so that's okay. That's okay. They're they're all here now for the fireworks, though. They're all here now for the fireworks. So I'm looking at it. I got it in front of me. I'm taking a peek at Bitcoin, and I got some things to say. I'll hold on it though, because I'll let Tyson go first. I'm just saying it's at twenty four four hundred. That's impressive. Uh, I'm I'm still blown away. It's not below 20k still, but here we are. Tyson, what do you think? I don't know, dude. I'm kind of torn between two fucking uh, two two sides here. Mm. At, at the same at the at one point, I want to say the top is in, 
and I want to flip bearish, but then again, the it. fucking the fucking weekly MACD looks really good, and it's that's about the, the only thing time. that looks good to me. But go ahead. Yeah, it's 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 crossed for the first time in like fucking ages since like April like last Wait, year. Actually. Golden Cross is that what you're talking about? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that is. I know, you... I love that term because I'd see that on penny stock forums all the time. It's forming a golden cross. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what it is, Adam? Do you know what it is? Yeah, it's, I I don't know what the lines are actually called, but it's when they 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 crossed in a specific way, which means up only, and it's true. Okay, okay. Mm. A, a golden burning cross on someone's lawn. <laughs> That's oh, Isn't god. Like... <laughs> oh my god, dude! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't say anything crazy. Yeah, like, well, um, I think <laughs> if we hold on, let me bring up my my sneed pivots. <laughs> you say you say that like we all know what it is, but yeah, I know. If, I have a Noah. If we <laughs> if we close the fucking weekly above twenty four point three, and we hold that, we probably will make our way to twenty eight. If we get rejected here at twenty four point three, I think we can see uh twenty k twenty point one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, this the stochastic looks pretty fucking topped out here. And if you look at some other alts, um, they're they're all forming like a fucking bearish divergence. But you know what they say: the stochastic can stay retarded more than longer than you can stay fucking solvent. That is well, what they say. That is, well, that's what you say specifically. But do you do you have anything else to say as well, Adam? You got any comment well, on that? What regarding BDC and yeah, AFM. BBC and BDC. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'll pull it up to what twenty four point four k. I yeah. mean, if you draw like a simple little meme trend line from like the local bottom to where we're at, like it's not an exact science, and it's not an exactly straight line. And you know, Moya, you aren't exactly straight either. But that's a discussion for later. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just do a bit of TA live and just fucking BTFing Moya while I do it. You know? Yeah, that that is some serious multitasking. Maybe we should have had you on last episode. Jeez, I underestimated this guy. Um, but, God. but you can see, like, on the daily, like, it's just, like, like kind of just been, been wicking up to this area a few times. Um, You know, yes. like, it had previously, previously wicked up to 24.2, then it wicked up to 24.4, uh, 24.6, and then it wicked up to 24.8. You know, like, it's just, it's constantly wicking up, which shows I, it wants to go up, right? It's, it wants to go up, but there's something holding it back. <laughs> I want so, to yeah. believe. <laughs> yeah, that's called a resistance level. <laughs> no, no, no. And, yeah, but, and every time it hits the resistance level, it means it's getting weaker and weaker. That's what they say, you know? Mm. Um, so it, all I'm saying is, in my over-optimist mind, yeah, like, obviously a rejection here would be fucking depressing. Um, but, like, mm. I could also see a Bart up. I don't know. You're you're being suspiciously informative, and it's making me uneasy. So thank you for that. I appreciate <laughs> it. But my issue is, you, you mentioned the one day, and I clicked around on it. Everything looks really ugly, topped out-wise, on the one day. It, it looks like we're going to at least take a ride in the medium term. But when I move over to the one week, that's not looking so pretty itself. I mean, the MACD is about the only saving grace that Tyson was talking about, but that stoke is, is back on yeah. the rise. RSI like you, is still pretty low. If you put on the, RS, the, the stochastic and, and use the special settings for that indicator, <laughs> and you check the, all the, the special <laughs> settings, the Tyson, the, Tyson, settings. the Tyson settings. But if you, <laughs> if you check like all these fucking altcoins, their stochastic is like way fucking up there and it's mm. printing like a big fat fucking bearish divergence so mm. maybe bitcoin i don't know i, I feel like it i feel like bit, it's gonna do something that's unexpected i feel like maybe the altcoin market just drags bitcoin down oh i've never heard about that that's a thing that's not real I, I don't know. I'm just speculating at this point. Yeah, but, I, I didn't yeah, think all, that was really... all these all these alts are, for, are printing like really fucking top big top signals and mm. and Bitcoin. I mean, technically, it it's okay. Like the MACD is good and mm -hmm. uh, it's it's not that bad. But I, I feel like something's up. So I just want to say I feel like anything trending in the bull direction is a bit optimistic from what I'm seeing right now, let's say if I remove the RSI and the Stoke and the MACD and any other indicators and was just looking at the chart straight up, 
That's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. I mean, this this looks like a failed recovery leaning into <laughs> a plunge to 15K. That's a really ugly chart. If we were to meaningful, let's just say if we were to meaningfully recover right now to 40K, I just can't even imagine the chart looking like that. It wouldn't make any sense. I, And again, I understand that that might be Kabuki Theater, a little magic there, but maybe maybe a little more art than science but i see in my mind from looking at this chart it, it wants to go to 11k it wants to go to 15 or 11k oh, i think geez. it wants to go way <clears throat> down there like i'm looking at some spot Shut right up. here uh that last bottom at 18k 18360 or something it needs it's gonna go back below that I'm just calling it right now. It's going to go back below that. We're only one bad uh, earnings report or jobs report or inflation report away from some just diabolical drop between 18K. And I'd love to see it. I'm here for it. And then another year of hanging out before things get going again. For it to recover now makes absolutely no sense. But there is so much. The only thing that keeps me optimistic is that there is just an insane amount of money in crypto. And when you're watching really boring, not C-SPAN, but let's just say Fox Business during the day, they have the tickers for Bitcoin. It is ingrained in traditional yeah. financial <laughs> culture. We so, made it, bros. We made it. <laughs> yeah. You, you, at what cost? <laughs> what did it cost? Everything. Also, so, another thing that, that, that lends to my point is like, do you really think like the bear market's gonna be like this short? Like yeah. really? <laughs> yeah. Like I, I still feel like it, it's not it's not extended enough uh, time wise. Like really? Like we're gonna dump for six months or nine months and that's Maybe it. Maybe we're just old school Tyson and can't get with the time. You know, back in my day, a bear market would last three <laughs> yeah, yeah. years and you'd have to, you know. <laughs> you'd have to you'd literally have to... eat gruel for three years and buy link. Yeah. You, you yeah. would have to talk to people in the unofficial chain link discord for three years till it went back up back in my Yo, but now like it's just now. <laughs> Well, it was, but here we are now. <laughs> so maybe maybe the bear market's only six months to a year now maybe things have gotten easier hard times created <laughs> weak men i don't, I don't know it is true like this, this bull cycle <laughs> prior was acting um a bit different than the ones before it so who knows maybe maybe the fucking uh, bear cycle acts differently as well i also <laughs> feel like on a broader sense everyone's reaction to these markets is just it's apoplectic it's over the top when we experience a comically large crash during covid that was life-changing and most people hadn't seen that in their entire lifetimes but um, when we have other crashes that aren't that comparable to it we freak out anyways it's it's to me it's like yeah. we just experienced something way worse two years ago and it recovered very yeah, quickly yeah. what's the difference between then and now you know i, I remember the, the 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 dumps that were going on in the stock market in that two weeks when covid first hit its full friction culturally that was uh that was a sight to see that i i thought the biggest drop i've ever seen in my life was post 9 11 when the markets reopened but it was not COVID. COVID made that look like nothing so yep. i think people are overreacting i think people are overreacting in all of the markets and i think there's more room for pain because we haven't experienced enough of it but go ahead are you, are you telling me that at 10 years old you were staring at markets opens Market I open. was because uh, my dad got me Apple and Pepsi stock, and uh, I would watch really? the stock Based? market. Those were my first stock. He said, which ones do you want? And I said, Apple and Pepsi. And he got Compaq and got fucking wrecked. <laughs> I don't even know if you guys know what Compaq is. Dude, my, my, fucking, my fucking parents opened me up like a, like a fake demo account on like a stock trading website when I was like um, – uh, 12 or 13 with yeah. like a hundred thousand like fake dollars in it and yep. i lost that in like fucking two days i just <laughs> went all in on, on like a gold long i thought shit. this was gonna be like a like a base tice and i turned that into 14 million dollars and they told yeah. me the money was real but when i went to cash I mean, out it was i mean fake. i did several times like i signed up for like fucking 20 of those accounts and i would go either blow them or like moon them to like a couple mil well, that gave you your good education, and also, I thought you were gonna have your Tyson Savant moment, and then I turned it into a billion dollars, you know. But like, like Adam was saying, but that's how you learn: lose a hundred thousand fake dollars, make a hundred thousand <laughs> real dollars. You know, that's the name of the oh, game. Yeah. But I, I, I blame myself because I sold my one Apple stock because I had to go to a date, go on a date with some cunt my sophomore year of high school. Fucking bitch! I hope you had a good time, you bitch. 
And uh, yeah, yeah so. do you want to t- maybe tell us a bit more about that? You did sell your that? Apple for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told. I said, Dad. My dad's like, if you really want to go on a date with her, you know, where's your money, you fucking loser? And it's just like, I guess I have that Apple stock and then I sold it. So whatever. Um, but it's okay. You can't win them all. I just, I hope you had fun at Fridays in that movie and the uh, CD star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was good looking. She was good looking for sure. It's very, she was, she was a ballet dancer. She's a good kid. Yeah. But, uh, was she also yeah, 13? Yeah, what's good? Dude. Does it matter? You know, it's all right. But um, I don't know why I was just talking about that. I'll have to change the subject rapidly. And I don't really see the point in talking about alts either because they're just kind of moving in the same direction as this. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have anything exciting to say about those, but I don't, no, I don't Rose's, really... Rose has stopped moving, but it's staying at 10 cents. So that's something um, I think the time to... I think if it starts to reject here, it's going to dump really fucking fast. What is? If it if it starts to reject your Bitcoin, so oh, if that okay. happens, uh, be prepared to offload your alts because you're gonna go to the fucking toilet. You know what? I'm I'm just gonna have one of those moments where I say I'm putting all my chips in. This is going sub fifteen, and I'm totally here for it. I I think what I'm looking at now is the most pathetic fake recovery I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. But Bitcoin used to rip after shit like this. Now yeah, it's just know, pathetic. Right? <clears throat> it's just pathetic. All right. For instance, what happened to fucking V bottoms? It's like a fucking W bottom now. Yeah, wow. it's, it's ugly. It's what ugly. What happened to single candle bottoms and then single candle tops? Just mm-hmm. like, Neow. well, look at the lifespan of Bitcoin from March 2018 until August 2020. It was doing nothing for two years. It was doing basically nothing but going down and fluctuating for two years. Until it popped back up, up to 40k, 60k, etc. So I, I don't, um, I don't foresee it having a meaningful recovery. I think this is just its next retest level for the next year. It won't be two years again. Bitcoin's too popular for that to happen. It's, it's going to be another year of just uh, <clears throat> ranging. I guess is what the kids are calling it these days. It's ranging. So that's that th- those are, those are my thoughts. And I don't know if has does anyone have any comments on this or the broader market or what. Hold on. Um, okay. Oh, Litecoin halving in exactly one year from now. Mm. Okay. R- remind me of 365 days. <laughs> okay. 343 right days. But yeah, I when that comes around, I'm definitely going to play uh, Litecoin for like a 2x or 3x. Mm. Wait, what, what was that thing going on with Ethereum a few days ago? Was it there some sort of... I don't know. I think it's like or... merging or some some gay Just shit. Just some dumb block shit that people pretend yeah, to be. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's making weird noises. I Dude, I... <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. I should be more responsible as as a as a host, but it just makes me How laugh. How can you guys hear that? Jesus Christ! I'm wearing big fat razor headphones that <laughs> muffle everything, so when you make a noise, I hear it. It's just, this is great, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't make noises like that. But hey, you know what? You want to talk about what could give Bitcoin a chances? I think I think the people think we're going into recession. I don't see that at all, really, in traditional markets. I just see as we've we're just in some sort of lackadaisical, blase market <clears throat> momentum that's gonna pick up um, relatively soon, especially as midterms come around. I, I think I think we're due for some good traditional changes in the market. Yeah, I read this really uh, Kino fucking breakdown of the market. Um, That's Kino, wasn't it? Okay. Kino, yes, yes, Kino, yes. <laughs> but I think the the general consensus after like all this um, rate, all these rate hikes and all this stuff is that the the, the economy was expecting like a a big like rough um, crash. But now I think the consensus has shifted to kind of more like a soft landing, so to speak. Yeah, and you know who said that himself? You know whose words you stole out of his mouth? Chairman uh-huh. Powell said that exact thing. He said, we're Chairman expecting Mal? a... So- Let's go. <laughs> no, Powell. <laughs> <laughs> he said, expect a soft landing from our turmoil as far as inflation goes. And that's what we're getting. So he, he's the best chair in my lifetime. He really is the best. Uh, if, if we're going to have a Federal Reserve, at least have a good chairman. And I think Powell has handled himself really well through these two administrations. I did like that Trump actually turned the heat up and, and mentioned the Fed. 
Most presidents rarely <clears throat> can do that. So, <laughs> you, you giggling about something there? No, just just the, this like Fed has two meanings to me. Oh, that's funny. right. You're right. I meant the Federal Reserve. I didn't mean. Yeah. The, I didn't mean the deep state. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but I'm I'm sure we could talk about that at at some point. Actually, probably within the next two minutes. So I just wanted to say in closing, crypto traditional markets overall, you know. It's okay to be average as far as markets go. I think everyone also expects... In pain, also in penis size. Yeah, which is four inches. No, <laughs> yeah, especially not that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say, though, I have offloaded some of my alts. And I'll, <laughs> You're going to talk get... about your dick. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, though, it is... Well, no, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. Sorry. I've offloaded some of my alts, and, and um, I've entered like a cautious half-size short on bitcoin here Good. but if it goes higher uh if it stops me out past like 25k or some shit i'm just gonna get back in and ride it, it to 28 let's go it's not it's not gonna rec- okay put it this way if bitcoin goes past 30k i'll shut up but i don't see that mm-hmm. happening i just okay. don't okay 11k fucking nerd shut up <laughs> listen i think I think it's a lot more fun to be bearish than bullish. After all these years, I finally get it. I finally get it. There's more fun in people suffering than me making money. Exactly. <laughs> it, it took me years Fucking... to realize that. It took me years you to realize. You finally why I, I, I love being bearish all the time. <laughs> no, it feels great. I just, it fuels me, you know? It's, 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 it's funny because you guys have, like, kind of half made it, whereas, like, I'm just kind of like wallowing in like the fucking mud over here, just like a pig, like just like trying to like. Dude, get- <laughs> when, a, when a fucking when a fucking boltard like says doesn't didn't read never selling and then it just dumps in the fucking oblivion. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, I love it. And most of the people who type things like that got into the link at five dollars or something. Yeah, it's just sex. embarrassing. Better than sex. Better than sex. <laughs> So, you know, it's like that classic meme. It's it's not enough that, that others, that I should succeed. Yeah. Others should <laughs> fail. Like, like, true or worse, it, it, have never like, been spoken. It is a zero-sum game, and you're the other side of my bet, When <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So if anyone wants to ask me if I'm a capitalist or a socialist or a communist, I'm just a, I want people to lose money, and I don't care if I make money. So that that's my economic outlook right now. And, uh... Uh, that makes me happy. So I'm I'm glad we could get there. I I feel like this podcast serves as a um, introspective catharsis for a lot of our different political and economic views. And you guys got me there. You know, so. speaking of that, I've actually was researching like some political ideologies last night, and I think <laughs> I came okay. across this one that like really I think encapsulates my the wig my... party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the no, wigs. No. I think as of. As of now, I would call myself a Marxist homosexual. Okay. Also, that is. Wait, are you serious? Yeah, those are like uh, those are like uh, conservative uh, Marxists. Can you give me a broad? Have you read the Communist Manifesto? Yeah. You you think Tyson read something? You read that Tyson? I did. Yeah. How many the, pages? The, dude, is the that? Communist Manifesto is like fucking thirty-five pages. It's not that big. It's oh. a it's a fucking like manual that used to be distributed to fucking like war, field workers. It's not that complex. Oh well, go read Das Capital or something. Then go talk to us. You read a <laughs> yeah. fucking Tyson reads one pamphlet and that's his personality for the week. So all no, right, g- no, give, no. I've been give me I've some been shifting points. away from fucking um, capitalism for a while now. Go, go ahead. This I've is interesting been, to me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think like my my biggest um, barrier right to ditching capitalism was just like the the lunacy of of like Western fucking um, communists and like and just like their behavior. But okay. after discovering like the faction of of Marxist Leninists and and and, um, and their philosophy, I've just been uh, really interested. And yeah, can you expand on what that philosophy might be? So a lot of it is um fuck I, I, okay I'm going to say this straight up I'm not smart enough to like explain it eloquently but no. <laughs> so it sounds like Tyson Tyson's just just, just on, on the bandwagon here my, my dude read a 35 page pamphlet and still can't even get anything from that <laughs> I'm pretty Listen. I'm pretty 
I'm trying to explain what? it in the way that like separates it from fucking like normal communists because I can All get right. up here and say like oh seize the means of production right but it's not different from a fucking blue haired dyke that says that okay <laughs> listen okay <laughs> okay let me pull you off the short bus for a second and I'll try and narrow it down a little bit strictly speaking in an economic sense we're not talking about social sense because I think that's where a lot of people get lost. From an economic sense... Yeah, on economic structure. On economic structure. Sure. I can certainly take a lot of points that communism have. And you know what your main argument should be? Is the wealth gap that unfettered or let's just say crony capitalism has created <clears throat> in America is very noticeable. And in other countries, it's even worse. Anything that could tighten that gap, whether it's through legislation or not, I'm for it. I'm actually for it. You know what? Something I was thinking about a few days ago was it's a really dumb surface level talking point because people want to tax them more or they they talk about it from the perspective that they need. What do they need all that money for? They don't need all that money. They could they need like that's enough for 20 lifetimes. I don't care that they have a lot of money. I care that the disparity between a CEO and the next highest worker in that company is 20 to 30 to 40 million dollars i think that's a problem because it didn't used to be like that and that money could be redistributed right, right. not the, that the, the not redistributed used to be like, to be like yeah, fucking 15x or 20x but now it's like 100x you know, so between that the money and... could be more meaningfully distributed even within that own company not through other people through social programs i'm just yeah. saying within companies and we used to have the people talk about the heydays of the 50s and 60s when our money meant a lot more, went a lot further. That's because there was more balanced pay within companies where you worked. Now pay yeah. is not balanced at all. <laughs> you're just working Excel sheets for 70K a year when, while your CEO Ford, makes 70 million. Go ahead. When Henry Ford was, um, was making his factory, he attracted fucking workers from everywhere around the world because he was paying the exorbitant high rate of $5 a day at that time. Mm -hmm. And at the time, that was a really good fucking wage. It, it was good enough to like get people to to move from like the the Philippines or or the Arab states all the way to America just for that wage. The Orient, so, Tyson, the Orient. Yeah, yeah. Also, <laughs> I, I've been I've been thinking a lot, um, a bit harder, and I think one big distinction between like Marxist Leninism and um your your standard like cookie cutter Western communist right is the fact that. MLs are are really pro authoritarianism. MLs. Like we we <laughs> He's got the acronym MLs. down. Okay. MLs. Are you serious? <laughs> the major leagues. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah MLB. <laughs> <laughs> but we we believe in the power of the state, and we believe like in 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 um, aristocrats or fucking uh, people in power that do know what. Is better for the people than the average person because the average person is fucking retarded so i can, I can get yeah. behind that and the reason why you might have a little bit of an argument is because these types of people who believe in this strong working class are also pro-gun and they're they're yeah. they're pro arming themselves and defending themselves as citizens and, and they, they're anti-glowy and that's what we love about them okay and it just uh, that threw off my train of thought a little bit but what i'm saying is they have a bit more they have a bit more bravado than what is termed coined as communism in the west mm -hmm. the soviet style communism maybe in line with more you're thinking about is is pro family pro firearms and it's pro cohesive unit as a society that all works together and they want to encourage a government that helps inculcate that and creates that exactly. type of vibrant culture we don't that's not something that's gifted to us through capitalism Dude, the, in the, the West. fucking average western communists right they despise the fucking working class if, if they met one of the one of the working class they would spit on them they do hate you the think, working class yeah. you think if they met like some fucking uh some guy that like works in the mines and has like and that guy like loves to shoot guns and fucking like doesn't like, have like a beer after doesn't like work and all that stuff. You think they would shake hands with that person? Absolutely not. No, way. no, and that's because the version of communism we have well, in the it's, West—it's it's cafe communism, right? It's like you sit down with your ladies, have some lattes, and be like, "Yeah, we need to kill the CEOs and eat the rich." Exactly, and it's because it's come out of academia. Our version of communism mm -hmm. has been birthed out of academia in the U.S. It's not like that 
from where it originally came from and it makes a huge difference and yes that's where a lot of people also lose the plot as well they talk about redistribution through taxes from the government we need to learn to start redistributing within communities within corporations within business that makes a lot that that makes a bigger difference than depending on the government to do it for you and that's the way we used to be but now through the natural the, the natural evolution of capitalism in our country has created this gap that we're going to have a really, really hard time fixing. The, the wage gap in this country of what you make and what you can afford is – you can't look away at this point. You can't look mm -hmm. away. And I, I think it's the biggest problem facing this country. And in order to fix it, you have to take drastic measure, measures. Freer communism or freer capitalism will not fix it. It just will not. And people think, well, if we – tax corporations less or if we tax people less than then you know or mainly corporations less then it'll fix itself because corporations have more money it's no that's not going to fix it i'm sorry that's a weak conservative talking point that doesn't yeah. work so the, we need to dude, one of yeah. the most one of the most egregious points i ever heard from um from like modern day fucking capitalists like like uh shapiro and all that so this is like an, <laughs> an ironic quote from from ben shapiro um i think he was asked a question about like uh okay obamacare and 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 uh state uh state regulated health care it, it's like socialist and, and bad etc and we should abolish that and then someone asked him well what if what if i get sick and i have to pay the companies like all this money and this dude unironically said that's where charity comes in <laughs> <laughs> I see that's not that is not a function and you know what tyson that's why you're onto something as well communism tails into culture as well capitalism pretends culture doesn't exist and throws it into its wake without even caring about it communism helps take culture under its own umbrella in an economic sense capitalism is just more well wh whoever pays for it that's what it's worth her 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 it's just, <laughs> yeah. you know it's just not it's not conducive to it's, a it's it's funny because yeah. I'm the actual political science major here, and I'm saying the least. Because well, it's, it's, it's fun ahead. listening to the no, it's just fun listening to the monkeys discuss what they think's relevant. And uh, all right, well, all yeah, right, you're the hard hitting ahead, intellectual. So yeah, yeah go ahead, tell us what the, you think. Your thesis. Well, no, I mean, I think you guys are like missing the point of like you know, there's 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 there's, there's like one big difference between communism and capitalism which you haven't addressed yet, and okay. it's the involvement of the state in your life. And okay. well, actually, no. Well, that's that's socialism. But like, to get to communism, you have to be socialist first, right? That's 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 the stepping stone. They talk about that in the manifesto. And so, like, do you want to live in a fucking society? It doesn't matter what that's how that society is built that has that amount of state involvement in your life. Yes. Me personally, no, because you know the state doesn't believe in the best thing for me. It believes in the best things for itself, and that's not necessarily the same. Um, uh, that's a very good point. But I do believe the state has to intervene at this point to yeah. be able to give the people livable wages, not through tax, through something else. <clears throat> Reading in corporations, maybe. But keep well, going. Let it's, it's 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 like, like, no, let them go. Let them go. I, okay, okay. I don't, I don't live in the American hellscape. Like, you know, I earn <laughs> mi minimum wage here in Australia, and it's about, it's about 29 Australian dollars, which is like 20, <sighs> I don't know, like 22 American dollars. Like, that's my minimum wage. <sighs> um. And like I like I believe for a fucking uni student like that works a couple of days a week. I believe I get I get paid enough to like warrant me putting an effort at work. Like yep. you know, like I don't feel as if um I, I don't know that you know hey all the Starbucks are unionizing and walking out like that's just not relevant where I live. And so like I don't I don't see there's like there's it's like a nice balance between a well put together like society and system that has healthy capitalism in it and like. It's nice being able to like live in the promised land here, and you know, fucking America is like you know shit, and never want to. Live but there I think it. the state is far more involved where you are than where we are. Yeah, but I, like I it's think... it's involved where it has to be. But like living in a pure socialist society is involved everywhere. Um, and so like you know like yeah like there's like you're, universal health care from like from Australia, which you're, you're you're saying like oh Australia has all like all these perks, but. You can't replicate those perks anywhere else in the world. No, what like, I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is I live in a society that, like, it's, like, it's not socialist, but it has some socialist aspects, which makes society better for everyone, but it's still mm -hmm. majority capitalist. And you're, and you're allowed to have a balance. 
and you don't need to be like i want to go full communist red pill because it's just like you know communism doesn't mean like the end of like like product manufacturing like you could still have like fucking different brands of cereal I no i know but <laughs> no but communi- oh, plus communism, also, communism also, also, is okay go. one thing go ahead, one thing that i've noticed right um with like with like western communists and i mean sorry western um uh, conservative philosophy is that not not even like conservatives like but but it's like a western um politics in general there's like this insane fetishization of like fucking freedom right and i mm-hmm. disagree that's not fetishized it's legitimate. and unironically i feel like freedom is fucking overrated that's the china <laughs> that's literally the china shot in you that is literally the china shot in you Why is it china? do you think someone should be free enough to like fucking be addicted to heroin yes or should some no i don't believe that i think that's, someone yeah, that's their prerogative that's their no prerogative no i don't believe someone has a prerogative mm. i don't believe someone has it right to, are, to fucking be on... addicted to fucking meth i think if that we... happens someone should step in and say no you're not hitting the fucking meth pipe you're going to fucking rehab i don't give a shit what you say we are on the cusp of discussing morality as opposed to politics and economics so i think we we've looked over the edge and i definitely am seeing the end point certainly and i, I, I think i'll just I say think one you thing. guys i feel like the, the main distinction between me and, and adam is that he's I more optimistic he's about no you're more <laughs> optimistic about the the state of the average person whereas i'm more pessimistic and realistic about their capabilities no i just don't I believe don't, i have I don't, the right to say how someone else lives their life and i don't believe and i think that goes the other way as well I do. I do believe that. Yeah, that that is a great gesture, Adam, but eventually you letting other people live their lives how they want yeah. will eventually infringe on your own life and you need the state to stop that. I think Yeah, and that, that's I why I, fucking God. cops exist, right? Like, you know, I'm sure we're going to talk about, you know, cops Fair being enough. fucking, you know, like there's there's there are mechanisms that exist in a fucking productive society that doesn't have to go full fucking communism. Yep. Well, we're teetering between uh, social culture and economic culture, and I think more of my gripes come from the effect capitalism has on culture than vice versa. And I look at... I, I'm entertaining Tyson on this communist thing. I, I'm not a communist. I just believe that... Better dead than red, that's what I say. I'm just saying there is a natural wealth disparity created by capitalism that can be curtailed reasonably without making everyone a socialist and a communist. The, the, again, we have monopoly laws. That is a real thing that exists. I don't see people screeching about that all the time. So why don't we have more laws like that that can keep companies in line and just make a more equitable distribution within companies? I'm not telling anyone to get taxed more, and I'm definitely not saying we need more welfare or social programs. I'm just saying we have an insane earnings to spending gap that is out of control in this country this is the number one thing and i've said this a million times back in the day you used to be a loser who worked at mcdonald's and you could have a one bedroom apartment in a shitty part of your city now you cannot do that you need to work three different jobs to have a yep. roommate in a shit that's not how the world should be and <clears> i believe there should be intervention to fix it and let me agree work at that. McDonald's and live wherever I want. <laughs> I agree with that. I agree. Okay. With that. If the company's That's being parasitic, enough. you just have to stomp them like the bug they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tyson, you're getting awfully r slash anti work this fucking podcast. I'm not anti work. No, but they're like, you know, they're fucking abused by the corporations to the worker and we have to fucking stand up to them. And no, no. It's not I even respect about that. what they're doing. It's just. It's it's like I I like work and I think um it's in man's nature to fucking says work. the man who hasn't had a job for about four years. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like all right, Tyson, sit sit at an office desk for twenty minutes and then get back to me. So yeah, I I the, the way things are dis- and even work itself, you do two hours of work in an office every day and have to sit there for eight hours anyways and do that five times a week. Eh, we're not we're we're not helping ourselves out in that sense, but I. 
we spoke about this before last week, Tyson, on the Intellectuals episode. But this is this is going the same. Adam's keeping up with the best. All right, I didn't know you were a heavyweight too, Adam. I am. Dude. I literally do this at fucking universe. I did. I BTFO all kinds of people, and the best thing is, it's because I'm a person of color. I can say some kind of base shit and like get away with it. Because okay. I go to the most, I go to the most lefty university in my country, and I, I you know, I, <laughs> I, used to I do reveal the same my power thing. level on occasion. I did the same thing when I took a, a politics elective in um at uni. I would yeah. just quote like the most like Fed posty shit, and I would just say, "Well, I'm a person of color, so." I See, I couldn't do that. I called someone a Mexican in class one time, and I got in a lot of trouble. So you know, I just can't do it, and I'm barely even white. So, dude, you're you know the, fun, the funniest moment. The, the professor, like one time, he showed this clip of like fucking Bill Maher, and they like oh. some of the lefties in the class were like. Oh, get this right wing fascist out of here. <laughs> like oh to my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe they even said stuff like that in class. That's so ridiculous. <laughs> well, all right. Since we're already on this train and you guys think you can up the ante, I'm going to have to pull you back in if you can't control yourselves. But I'll just say, because I think it's what, interesting. What did, you mean? what did you mean by this? You'll soon see, because I'm watching you very closely. I am the big brother of this podcast, let's just say. And from what I understand, and yes, <laughs> Kadena's sister. Um, of the previous president in my country, Donald Trump was raided for supposedly having uh, top secret classified documents at his Mar-a-Lago resort. And I'll just go on a, a quick tirade and then you guys can say whatever you want. My issue with this isn't whether Trump did or didn't do it. My issue with this country is, and we talk about communism, we talk about capitalism, we talk about all these type of different political systems and economic systems. My problem with this country mainly is the bureaucratic state. So if you were if you advocate for democracy, that's fine. You're a pussy. If you advocate for fascism, okay, I get it, I get it. But if you're a supporter of the purely bureaucratic state, which we're kind of running headfirst into, I have a problem with you. Because the bureaucratic state <clears throat> only looks out for itself, it feasts on itself, and it functions by People within the bureaucracy having aspirations for pensions and better titles and better ranks and more power within the bureaucracy. And it trickles down in a negative way to the rest of, I, I would say, the rest of the country. So I don't care whether you hate Trump or like Trump well, or, or if you think he did something wrong or right, but you, you need to – keep an eye on this bureaucratic state in this country. Yeah. And if you support it and are actively rooting for it, I'm sorry, you're a traitor to this country. You're a traitor to your fellow citizen. And I, I, I can't take that back. That is how I very honestly feel. These people are not looking out for you. They don't have your best interest in mind. So with FBI, that in CIA, mind, IRS, now, now with that in mind, <laughs> how is the best way to dismantle those three letter uh, agencies? See, I, I'm for listen. one, <laughs> All right, I, I said I said you need to behave yourself, so I'll let you go. But come on, uh, be I'm a real person. Saying, I just say they are not your friend. They literally like fucking brainwash you. Like that's like a fact. Yeah, you know, yes. fucking, like, look, in, look into fucking Operation Midnight like, Climax. All I'm all I'm saying is just look into it. You know, they were just fucking dosing John Doe's with LSD and having them. <laughs> like fuck prostitutes and like to oh, see if they can like mind break them or whatever like i remember dude, you pointed like, this out to me before yeah <laughs> yeah dude, like they're just not your friend and just you know if you ever see a glowy you make sure to point it out for the rest of us like just do the rest of us a favor but the, the, the simping i see for these three letter agencies going on over twitter after this has happened it makes me sick to my stomach yeah. You, I, I, yeah. I, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I like, hope I hope these people die. I actually do, like, but go ahead. This goes into my my fucking point of like the average person. The average person that you're talking about is so fucking retarded that they would support <laughs> the deep state just to own the fucking the rhytoids. Like how stupid <laughs> okay, do you have you're to going be. For it. You're saying all the words. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, like, oh, people buzzwords. shouldn't be allowed to vote. You should just be so told to shut the fuck up and just do what, like, the aristocrats Okay, Mao. Do. Okay, Mao. <laughs> Holy shit. The Chairman Tyson over here. This isn't even about Congress or dumb voters or democracy. The bureaucratic state is a separate entity and it is malevolent with it, its intentions. You cannot, you cannot get in bed with these people. It's, they're, they are the wrong. Yep. And I, I... 
I, I don't want to I don't want to accidentally I, I don't want to be attributing something maniacal to them and just be like oh they're these evil people and just kind of be comical about it but as as a entity in itself the nature of bureaucracy is to grow and fester and leech off of the people and you cannot you cannot support them and it, it, too many people are and i think it's the last it's it's probably <clears throat> the last bastion of american holdout is to resist these people but people aren't yeah. doing it anymore they don't um, care I, they're rooting for this, it because trump Go ahead. i read this really like uh, interesting uh, quote and i think it it encapsulates the uh, situation perfectly. So the quote is, any organization that that is uh, started with a goal in mind, be it like fucking env environmentalism or fucking upholding like security for a nation, over time, eventually, the organization's goals will shift into becoming supporting the existence of the organization itself. Mm -hmm. It will shift from its mm -hmm. original goal uh, yeah, it's gonna shift from its original goal to the to solely the existence and and continued existence of of the organization. So I think that's what's happening with that the. That sounds fucking, mighty. That sounds mighty FBI. familiar. Well, that's that's like the FBI mm -hmm. creating fake terrorists where they they go to someone that's you know wandering <laughs> yeah, yeah. around a mosque and say, "Hey, would you like to blow something up?" No, for have, a you, have you like, heard about that fucking thing where like um in the south somewhere like. This FBI agent like infiltrated like a clan, like one of the clan like um branches, and it turned out the entire branch was just all glowies from different agencies that hadn't like fucking spoken to each other and done like inter agency stuff. So there was like state state troopers who were undercover, like CIA people who were undercover, FBI people who were undercover, and then they just realized that there's just a bunch of glowies in the same room and there's no actual clan branch in that area. Mm, so mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. well, well, you know. Back when Vice used to do actual cool things, they had a special on some guy that was barely involved with his local mosque, and they were saying, hey, wouldn't it be great if he did a terrorist attack on this place? <laughs> yeah. And they, they were offering him money. They were saying this and saying that, and be like, oh, we'll see. You know. So they give him all the stuff, and then when he goes to do it, they just arrest him and take all of it. And, and he's like, <laughs> I wouldn't have never done any of this if you didn't say you'd give me a million dollars if I bombed this empty synagogue. you know. And then he's arrested for life, and then the FBI justifies his existence. It's just... It's sick. Yeah. It makes me sick to my stomach. And people root for that. People, that's the kind of organization you're supporting. It's just every year they have something that they've fucked up on and destroyed people over. And that's before you get to, you know what? Never yeah. mind. That's no, just before mention, like, you get fucking, to a lot of things. <laughs> there, there used to be like a, all this like liberal fucking uproar about like surveillance and the NSA and all that stuff. And that stuff just has just been completely wiped out. Like no one even cares anymore that the NSA is like spying on on like literally everything and that the concept of privacy has been like non-existent yeah and i don't I, it's hard for me to say i don't even know if the bureaucratic state is left or right leaning because i'm pretty sure most of the people in congress are fine with rank and file fbi even if they're on the right i think they just <laughs> hate trump <laughs> and i don't yeah. i don't want to get on the trump wagon or anything i mean full disclosure i did vote for him and it's fine. Based, Let's, based, based. Yeah, I'll I'll just say that, love him or hate him, the one thing that is true that I know for sure because he's a he's a fucking scam artist to the highest degree. Just like Elon Musk just takes notes on how much of a ridiculous scammer salesman Trump is. But there is one thing for sure: he was an outsider. He was not an insider. Yeah. When he was in the White House. He was a true outsider. That's what and, they want you to think. That's what they want you to believe. Yeah, exactly. The real red pill. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I got you, but I do truly no, think he's an outsider. Don't, you don't so. understand. The, the Patriots are in control just two more weeks. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> the arrests are coming. The arrests are coming. You well, haven't seen Hillary in a week. There's a reason for this. I, Tyson, I'd rather you be the fake communist that you are than a, a QA where, non guy. Where, so. where we go on, we go all over. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. You want to talk about three letter agency operations, QA9? Yeah, is the most just, obvious uh, fucking oh side. Glass, glass, <laughs> fucking radioactive, man. Holy yeah, shit. That's incredible. So, all right. Well, I think we got through that. Oh, okay. Oh, we okay. have one more. We have one more topic. And it's if we, were, we were about to get into it before we saw the recording button. And I'm going to bring it up. And I'm going to be the one to segue into this. Right. Oh, you're well. Okay. Well, now, it's, a, it's a good lead in. So, go I, ahead. I had a feeling. Um, I had a feeling this morning and before I got to talk to Moy, I was like, look, I think Moy has been having some slam pick action. 
Uh-huh. And it's just untrue, untrue but... and 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 then you know, then I asked him this question, and he's like, no, no, no. But then he has a, a someone at the pool, which I'm sure he's going to talk about. And then we got into a very heated but intellectual discussion of what qualifies as a slam pick. And after this, after the after we go through this, I want everyone to fucking personally DM me. I'll give you my fucking phone number. What did you think a slam pick is? <laughs> and then we can have a, a, a pink boys poll of what like the definition of a slam pig is and then it can be settled and we can go off in our separate directions having yeah. solved it's, this it's very clear what a slam pig is it's an attractive <sighs> woman that if she was just a bit more fat she would be considered fat but she's just below that that line that is not what a slam pig that's is that's not what all. a slam pig is yeah. that's not what a slam pig is yeah uh go go ahead uh adam what do you think it is i'm um, i'm a bel- it's it's it, it look a slam pig is it's like a it's 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 a useful term and has many uses so there can be a fat woman that's legitimately fat that you fuck constantly because you want to Ooh. that's a slam pig that's mm-hmm. a slam pig mm-hmm. but a slam <laughs> pig <laughs> shut up tyson <laughs> a slam pig can also be um also what you said like you know uh but i don't know like it's it's more it's more i think a slam pig is, is is more putting emphasis on the fact that like yeah they're fucking fat or whatever but i'll fuck them anyway it's not that they're kind of hot it's just like it's like yeah it's just like you know something to put your dick in for a little bit that's what i think <laughs> okay okay <laughs> i i'm under the impression that a slam pig is a overweight woman not one who's on the cusp of being overweight i don't know what tyson is going on about it's an overweight woman who is into you and wants to date you but you don't want to but you just have sex with them to to keep your pacing Mm. going that's what a slam pig is it's to make sure you don't get out of practice you know kind of yeah i don't i don't recommend it i think i think it's a gross a gross art you know, you better leave that the girl dark for part. <laughs> the dark the dark art. I literally did. <laughs> <laughs> you said that, not me. So yeah, no, I've actually, I've never, I've never dabbled in that specifically. Yeah. So I don't, I don't really... answer me this: Who would win, a slam pig or a brap hog? <laughs> <laughs> they can be the same. That's like that Venn diagram has know, crossover. I don't know. I don't know that what I, I don't know what a brat pog is. I'm disturbed. <laughs> oh god, you don't want the Tyson knows all about brat pogs. <laughs> is that just a girl with a fat ass? <laughs> but she brats. <laughs> well, okay, here's one. What's a pog? What's a pog? Fat ass white girl. Oh, yeah. that's literally what that means. Yeah, okay. yeah, pog. Okay. Yeah, there's pog. pog and then the pag, which is fat ass Asian girl. <laughs> <laughs> so a, an oxymoron some would say because yeah. i've never seen that in my entire life <laughs> but <laughs> and uh a, a, a wumaf white man asian female uh-huh okay okay that, that, uh a bbc obviously well you're you're it's reminding a, me yeah. of a classic western term called slump busting and it kind of goes. Do you know what that is? No, I don't know what so that is. So it's a it's a baseball term where I, I think it's about if if you haven't got a hit for a while, you go up against a bad pitcher just to get a hit and break your slump. And it's yeah. the same thing when it comes to sex. Is you, you're on a dry streak with sex, so you go out slump busting with your friend and just get with a fat fat ugly <laughs> girl to break your slump. I always thought it was a great term. My friend That's would great. be like, "I'm going to use that." Tis the time to go slump busting. So, because I think some, like, I don't know if it's a baseball term, but a baseball player made it. One of these, like, hold on, let me see if I can just Google it real quick. Because he's just like, a, I think it was like Alex Rodriguez or something. Um, A-Rod. A-Rod, baby. Not A-Rod. It was like, oh, it was like Jose Canseco or something. One of those baseball players that's just ridiculous. Um, he, he like, kind of broke the term out there. And, yeah, I, I, think, it's, I think it's very Wait, accurate. To, no, to, be, to be used in that context as well. Yes, in a sexual contest. Yeah. Co- context. I think I think he did. So <laughs> that's really funny. So when you come to America, we'll go slump busting. We'll go slump busting. We'll go slump yeah. busting. I'll be we'll, in the go, back. we'll go to IHOP and then go slump busting. <laughs> I'll be in the back. Yeah. I'll be in the back, rap hog busting as well. <laughs> yeah, you're in the. You'll be in the back reading page two of Das Capital before you give <laughs> off fucking poser. Yeah. Have you ever read the literature, man? Read the literature, then get back to me. no. Read the literature. Let's read the uh, literature. I'm gonna refuse to do that ever and just be a based ML. <laughs> uh, uh, ML. I'll come clean and just say I, I want a straight up theocracy in my country. So uh, once that happens, we'll actually, be good. And on, on the topic of God, women, um, I've, I've been Amen, fucking. Brother. 
I've been on an anime binge recently, and I've okay, discovered that women, women, three D girls, and two fat people. I've been talking to some. I've been talking to some people lately who think those fictional girls on your screen are real. So whatever. I won't name them. I've been on a fucking ahead. anime binge, and I realize it helped me realize that I love fucking angry women, like just women that are like overly no, aggressive no 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 no, no, no. You're, got, you're confused you're confused tyson what you, you want is like a spicy latina that's what you want like like you mm. know like you know that that fucking meme ari does where it's like the phone rings and it's a latina on the other end of the line and she's yelling at you i, I want I, that I, I i like that so much yeah i like i like that i don't want that, like a woman who's genuinely mad i want like a no, hot no, she's angry like, she's woman. like pretend mad or like she's she's cute mad you know Oh, the yeah, world like, according only, to Tyson. Only, only, lat only, only Latinas can actually pull that off, in my opinion, because they, they're the only ones who will speak Spanish to you, and that's the only hot language to get yelled at. Uh. In. Tyson, there's a big difference between a neurotic, insufferable bitch and a girl pointing her fingers together, looking down and being like, I don't know, Tyson, Goo, that's on her anime. There's a big difference between the two. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. But, uh, yeah, you watch Konosuba yet? No, I don't know. What, Watch Kona Suba. Watch it. It's well, look. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. Listen, those days are long gone behind me, but I'll tell you, you should watch it. It's good. It's funny. It's relaxing. So, and and our other, wasn't there a British guy on this podcast? Who was that? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He's been, he's dead. So he went and talked to this huge game about how, you know, it's not that big a deal. They don't have air conditioning. And then he dies. He just yeah. dies in the country. He, does, he died of electric fan death, guys. Let's be real. <laughs> electric fan death. That's a good throwback. I Dude, like speaking that. of death, did you guys see that fucking Asian vape shop owner just like stab that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. Yeah, and the guy, the guy fell, the the guy so fell down and went, I'm dead. He said, yeah. I'm dead. <laughs> hey, bro, I'm dead for real. <laughs> That's yeah, kind of bad. He stabbed him in the side of the neck. That was fucking brutal. No, dude, man. I saw a video of um, fuck, there's of uh, it, at like a mall in um, in the Gold Coast in Queensland. Like it was like it was like a really fucked get. Like this guy full on just like stabbed him right in the jugular, and you see the guy bleed out in real time in about fifteen seconds. Oh. Like it's an absolutely just like fucked get in the neck, and it's like whoa, like. Dude, yeah. I, I I used to be able to stomach stuff like that, but as you get older, you get a lot okay, easier yeah. I, with I don't violent know. I don't like stuff. It. Especially, so. and it was a young kid too. It was like he was, he was like a teenager as well, which made it even worse. Just you know, I think just, in the case of the vape shop owner, it was it was justified. The guy was like jumping over the counter, like about to attack him. So mm. was he getting like was he robbing him or something? Was he? Oh yeah, him? it was justified. Yeah, the guy was, was like, in America. Yeah. Of course, yeah, where do you think it fucking was? Yeah, you're, you're talking about two different races and someone robbing a place. It was America. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> and what is the second race, Anon, per se? <laughs> Chance? The goddamn uh... Chinese. <laughs> Um, so I just want to say real quick, the last snuff film I ever watched was from this Finnish guy or like Icelandic guy. He was just some weird yeah. looking guy who had some gay boyfriend that he killed by stabbing him a hundred times with an ice pick. Also, it was a home And there's film. a video of it. What? <laughs> it was a whole movie. <laughs> it was a snuff film. You know that term. Yeah. Did you uh, like, you actually watch those for, like for fun? I made a joke. There was a home film because you said gay boyfriend. <laughs> 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 no but never mind I'll, I'll just say that was the last thing i watched it was a real and the, but he escaped after he made the video so he was on the run for a while and everyone was watching this video of him stabbing his Wait, boyfriend did he post it on, ice did, did he yeah post it was it on, on like uh it was on whatever those gore websites are it wasn't red yeah. tube that's a poor <laughs> website sorry i forget which website it was but it's out there it's a just search uh gay boyfriend ice pick death I don't need. I don't so. need. I don't really need to do that. Uh, Yo, uh, Adam, did you yeah. did you ever prank people with uh, fucking ZooTube when you were a kid? <laughs> uh, look, I, we've all seen what three men, one horse, or whatever the fuck. It yeah, was. yeah, dude. Yeah, I used to prank my guy. friends and like send them to that website. <laughs> um, nah, the, the 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 good the good fucking meme was meatspin.com. 
That was the real prank. That was a classic, yeah. On like when you were in, when you're at school and you got your like your school laptops out, like you have to like rent from the library and like, hey, no, go the funniest thing was that like was like after the fiftieth spin, there was like a message that pops up saying, "Congrats, you're officially gay." <laughs> <laughs> so I have it. Let's do a little live on air thing, and if you guys want to follow along, feel free. I just entered it into my browser, and I'm about to click enter to see if it exists. So back in my day. Lemonparty.org was the big one. On when you were on GameFacts.com oh. message, when you were on GameFacts.com message board, you'd say, "Oh, you know, Guitar Hero," th or you'd say, "Jedi Knight Three is coming out." Here's the link, and it's it was Lemonparty.org. <laughs> so I, I have it entered in my browser. I'm gonna click enter. Click enter. Is that, um, is that the video? Is that the video of the guy uh, shooting out lemons? Uh, no, and uh, yep, it exists. So <laughs> Lemonparty.org still exists. Um, so I'm gonna look there it up go. real quick. Hopefully, my parents don't walk into this. Yeah, look it up real quick, actually. I'll wait. Dog. Oh, thanks. thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anytime, anytime. So that that's us three in sixty years. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the pink boys, baby. Yeah, that, pink boys meet up in sixty years. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll end it there please 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 let me end it there uh tyson right. you got anything on the back end before we saddle up um be careful the top could be in so yeah okay it, but if it if it starts pumping we probably see 28 okay okay fair enough what about you adam please dm me your definition of slam pig and i'll put together a pink boys approved uh, de definition and I'll submit it to the Oxford Merriam-Webster dictionary and it can be settled and we can go about our lives. Okay, and I need to put a quick disclaimer. We do not advocate for violence against any three-letter agencies okay. and mm. happy slump busting! <laughs> <laughs> and